Looks like we're never going to taste that sweet, sweet Florida Cup, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. But, you know, you might not be because Chelsea lost to Arsenal in pre-season 4-0. Ooh la la. Stings, doesn't it? Though, it is only pre-season. Genuinely, though, my heart goes out to anyone who got up for in, in silly times of the night to watch that game. I certainly didn't. And I woke up and I went... Doesn't look good to me, though, again, reiterating, it is only pre-season. Last time we won the league, we lost to Rapid Vienna in pre-season. Anyway, welcome back to Chelsea News, of course, the daily series here on the channel where I do reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it. More importantly, asking for yours, and I think there's going to be some opinions from you, man, down in the comment section below. We're going to reflect on what Big Tommy Took said about this defeat and his general stance on the current position of Chelsea Football Club. And we're going to jump back on the Jules Koundé train. What's going on there? Reports an update from Ben Jacobs. Do consider dropping a like to make me feel better about Chelsea's current position. Um, subscribe only if you want to but if you choose to do so boys and girls ladies and gentlemen hit that sweet sweet bell baby right this video is brought to you by spitch screw preseason no one likes preseason it's about premier league football and fantasy football and spitch is the best fantasy football because it utilizes optus stats and rewards you for actually knowing about the beautiful game Ooh la la Although it's free, you can wager money and win money. And there are um, season modes like you can see on the screen. If you do the paid one, you can win up to 50 grand. The free one's up to 2,500. Get rewarded for your football knowledge. Uh, simply click the link down in the description. Go check out Spitch. Sign up, baby, and enjoy it. You can play for free if you want. Also, you don't have to commit to the whole season. You can just pop in each weekend game week. Lovely stuff. Ooh. Uh, what? Okay, that's interesting. My overlay didn't work there, but it doesn't matter. We're back in the studio, Stamford Bridge. Uh, let's talk about what Tommy Took said prior to jumping over and talking transfers and Jules Kunde because we have a bunch of players and they're not playing very well. Thomas Tuchel is, uh, was, is, was, is, probably still is pissed off. And uh, I'm going to cite Adam Newson's article on the Football London to give you some context uh, and insight to what Tommy Took is saying. We'll react to it together. <laughs> And um, have some fun. Every word Thomas Tuchel said on the Chelsea attack. Arsenal, Kunde, Koulibaly, transfer business. Of course, we got touched up 4-0 in Orlando by London rivals Arsenal, who are looking very good. They look like they know what they're doing. They got their business done early. They're running around a lot. And they're having a nice time. It's only pre-season, Thomas. But how do you feel after that? Calm, angry relaxed relaxed is a bit like calm i'm far from relaxed i think we deserve to <laughs> deserve to lose which is fair enough because we were simply not good enough we were absolutely not competitive the worrying part is the level of commitment physically and mentally for this match it was not the same it was far higher for arsenal than us guys i didn't watch the match i can tell you that from the scoreline we can argue they played with, I think, their strongest lineup. Okay, fair enough. They've had now together several weeks and over more than one year. Fair enough. They've strengthened their lineup. They've played the same structure. And this is the lineup they'll start in the Premier League games. It was not our strongest lineup. Uh, this is part of the explanation, but only a little part. The other part is worrying. I think also Chelsea played a different formation. I cannot guarantee I saw today a team Arsenal uh, who are mentally committed to an idea of playing, a level of exhaustion, a level of physical commitment that we could not match. Also, a level of mental commitment that we lacked because we have a lot of players who are thinking about leaving and looking at their options. We have players that have left, and I think at the moment that's obvious. So when he's referencing players that want to leave, I am guessing the Spanish fullbacks, Ed Spilicueta, Alonso, players like Pachuay, I think, played, and, you know, where's his header? A lot of players don't want to get injured in preseason. If they know... 
their season isn't going to be at Chelsea in terms of selection, or if they'd prefer their season isn't at Chelsea with a desire to exit, you are not going to have... I mean, I'm not I'm not condoning this, by the way. I'm just doing a post-mortem. You're not going to have that application, certainly, that perhaps all these Arsenal players do buying into the project. Uh, let's ask Thomas Tuchel this, shall we? Does the result highlight the need for incomings? And is there an update on Jules Kunde? We'll talk about that in a moment, of course. There is no update, no update. The analysing of the season does not change because of this game. Unfortunately, it proved my point, and last week proves my point. I would prefer not to be right, and I did everything to prove myself wrong, but at the moment, I feel I was right when I looked at last season and the parts of the game where we struggled and how we struggled. Look, we got sanctioned players left us we know that some players are trying to leave us and this is where it is we had an urgent appeal for quality players and a huge amount of quality players we've got two quality players that is no doubt but we are not competitive like this and unfortunately we could see it today oh la la ladies and gentlemen thomas tooks is pissed off Understandably, you don't want to lose to your rivals 4-0, even if it isn't a meaningless, friendly preseason game. But he is... I'll give my, I'm going to read the rest of this, and I'm going to give my thoughts, hopefully balanced thoughts, on the situation. It feels like I've been a long tour, Thomas. Is it, has it been difficult? Uh, has it been a difficult environment? He says, look, it was long. It was long for sure. We could feel the energy levels drop after Las Vegas, after Charlotte, uh, because of the amount of traveling. It's very humid, the hot temperature. It made it tough because now it's now been two weeks on the road. It's also... A point but it's a little point or explanation why we did not look fresh I did not expect it today I thought we lowered a little bit in intensity in the training in the last days but not in the way where we could expect uh, fresh legs um, uh, so that was our biggest surprise just the difference between tired and playing like this yeah he says look man even if you're a bit knacked from training you don't do that on the pitch <laughs> this is the question that I'm really looking forward to hearing a response to are you concerned about goal scoring? And he said, for sure. If you look at that first half, it was hard to even escape, uh, escape our own half in a productive way to play in the opponent's half in a positive way and create chances. We had one chance with a shot that hit the post. I think that was Mason Mount. The amount of dangerous situations, the amount of one against ones, the amount of accelerations in the second half where we dominated the game. We were the better team in the first 22 minutes, but with but with the first action they score and we didn't have too many dangerous situations after that. Weak mentality, Chelsea. I've seen this all before. Start really well, flicking the ball, combining well. They score and you go, what? That, what? That, that, what? But that, okay, let's all collapse now. I mean, I didn't watch the game. I'm just assuming that happened. Listen, it's all the same, players, so why should we change anything? We will see, hopefully, the development, but at the moment, we have the same issues because we have the same players. Dun, dun, dun. Just on that, do you look at Liverpool and Man City? Given our last two weeks, our game today, we should not mention those two teams in front of us. We got absolutely beaten by a team that does not play Champions League football next season and finished behind us. Ouch, ouch. But at the moment, they seem far ahead of us. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sickener, isn't it? We got to see Koulibaly tonight, though. Thomas, thoughts on his performance? He was the best player on the pitch for us. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right, nice. Does that make you feel a bit more optimistic? On an evening where nothing felt good, <laughs> this felt very good. Well, then, technically not nothing, isn't it? Double negative there. How much do you find that preseason actually influenced the season proper? This is a question, and he says, my personal feeling, I don't know if I've ever lost a match in preseason 4-0. I can't remember not winning two matches in a row in preseason. Really? Wow. I'm a huge fan of a strong preseason in everything. Atmosphere, feeling, performance, belief. I am superstitious, but not in a way where I said a bad preseason has to mean a bad season. That makes no sense to me. I am in it part of it and need to find the solutions we fly home now and have one and a half days only on tuesday we need to present some solutions we need to present actions me and the coaching staff together with the team need to step up and find a way through because at the moment it hurts and you do tommy took i i love you not literally well maybe literally we'll, we won't get into that i mean not romantically 
that's for sure. Don't worry, mate. But there is issues here. You started with a back four, then switched to a back three. What do you think your defensive identity will be? That rhymed. We discussed this many times. If you want to play a back three, you need to have three in the back. If you don't, it's not worth playing three in the back. Given Koulibaly was only ready for 25 minutes today, and given who was available... We played a 4-4-2. This was not a structural problem because we conceded two goals with a back five and two sixes. We are used to playing. It was a behavior in the structure. That's much more important of how we behave. We need to be more lively and aggressive. The level of commitment, the level of physical input was simply not enough. The adaptation of position, the joy of helping each other, the joy of working hard together was what was missing. It's not a moment to destroy the group because they are very nice and hardworking group. This will not change. But for today, this honest analysis of the game, it's not worth talking around this. It was like this today. It's interesting, right? Because... <laughs> He he's, he's, he's always maintains his position on uh, positions on the um, on the formation, which is he doesn't he lot he thinks it, you know we all talk about formations. Oh, we need to play a four three three. Oh, we need to play a four two three one. Uh, you know, oh no, we need to maintain this three four two one. Or let's play a three five two with double strikers. You know, it's a huge talking point. But Tuchel's never been interested in that. I think probably he understands how there's movement in formations but he's like yeah today he's saying look it's not nothing to do with formation it's to do with application and that's true like you know we played 4-4-2 today and uh, we said you could say oh you let loads in 4-4-2 can be the absolute stinkiest defensive formation ever you know you think of like a atletico madrid burnley like not giving up a goal for like 40 100 days do you know what i mean so yeah in that sense i agree i understand i condone said comment i love thomas tuchel i think he's an excellent coach i like how he gets emotional because if he didn't he'd be a robot that just doesn't care i like how he defended the club throughout you know the sanctions and etc i like how he plays with a, you know he's like friendly and fun with the squad he get he's a, he's a coach on the pitch as well uh you know united fans are getting terribly excited about ten hag he's the first uh you know, training ground coach they've had since David Moyes, I heard, which is, you know, the the, the one, you know, to, to get amongst it. Tuchel likes getting amongst it as well. I like all of that with Thomas Tuchel. I don't think he's completely powerless in making his, the current talent score goals. I do think he, the players probably don't suit his ideas and the current movement of the squad. I do understand that and many fans say that. But at the same time, I don't think he's completely blameless. But I, I'm not going to say I want him out because I don't think Chelsea will get a better coach than Thomas Tuchel. Simple as. You've got to have a sobering reminder of that. Um, you know, he'll set up a team. He just, you know, the, he won us the Champions League with an amazing run and performance. This is the kind of coach, calibre of coach he is. But he does need to do better he does need to do better and i think he will do better um personally i think he will do better and i think chelsea will get better players i'm really interested to hear your guys thoughts on that so make sure you comment down below on uh the other game two course comments on transfers and let's move on and talk about transfers ish Right, yeah, Ben. We're going to be citing Ben Jacobs on Twitter, who seemingly is well connected to everything with Chelsea. Although a lot of recurring themes in his statements, tweets, and uh, published articles or whatever he does in CBS Sports. So at Jacobs Ben on Twitter, saying, "My understanding on Jules Kounde is there has been an unexpected twist, like we reported yesterday in the morning." Uh, thank you to all everyone who's been supporting my content recently on. Stories I try and break quickly. Barcelona have U-turned from Friday morning, but they are yet to table an official bid for Jules Kounde. Chelsea felt the race was won. They thought it was pretty much done, and that's why a lot of people in the American preseason tour were like, yeah, yeah, it's done, mate, it's done. They still have a full agreement with Sevilla, and Barca don't yet. Sevilla's position has always been Barca must formally bid fast and match Chelsea's offer. Barcelona believe they can bid between 40 to 45 million euro and get closer, not match, to Chelsea's overall fee with add-ons. Remains to be seen where whether Sevilla accepts. Again, no formal offer has yet been made. See, that sounds weird. They're only going to accept more money, Sevilla. You know, why would you accept less money and sell him to a top four rival in Barcelona? 
Obviously, the player has to say, yeah, I'll only sign for them. You can sell me to them. But bold accounts, it does seem like Jules would be happy to come to Chelsea. He agreed personal terms last year. Um, People are speculating online that because we uh, went for other targets, Nathan Ake, Mateus De Ligt, and obviously Ake decided to stay. De Ligt preferred Bayern, perhaps. And this is speculating, I think, that Jules Koundé was offended by these preferences and maybe might be thinking, all right, well, I'll join the super team Barca that have just signed all these wicked players. I don't know that, obviously. I don't know. Uh, Barcelona had given up hope, but Xavi pushed hard for a bid. Barca always felt Kunde, U turning and traveling to Portugal to train with Sevilla brought them some time. As previously reported, that is not what Chelsea wanted. <clears throat> Excuse me, understandably. The situation right now, Chelsea have a deal with Sevilla, awaiting formalities and a formal sign-off. They've agreed pre- preferential personal terms with Kunde. Reminder, players can do that with both teams, so he could do that with Chelsea and Barcelona. But yeah, Chelsea yesterday felt the transfer was imminent. Barcelona have finally responded, though, even if Sevilla deny active negotiations, which they have publicly yesterday. <clears throat> the club has been in contact Obviously, if Barca now agree a fee, then it will then come down to the player choice. That's where Barca feel they have an advantage, though Koundé is open to both moves. The pursuit of the Koundé has been an incredible saga with Rafinha. Barcelona made their hand pretty clear. Challenge is was simply about agreeing terms of Leeds because Rafinha wanted to go to Barcelona. But with Koundé, it's a whole new level of games, smoke screens, and late U-turns. So Barcelona think he'll choose them. Maybe the aforementioned speculation of Kunde feeling offended that Chelsea went for other defenders. He's like, okay, well then I will go for Barcelona. Maybe. I don't know if that's a story or not. But uh, Chelsea won the Champions League recently. They can see what's going on with Barcelona in terms of all the you know financial risk they're taking with the levers and mortgaging off their future for the now and you know he's seeing Frankie De Jong's owed seventeen million pounds in wages that he's not been paid. And, you know, he had, like, pretty aggressive games against Barcelona in La Liga, where he got sent off throwing the ball in the opposition players' faces. All that kind of stuff. You know, Chelsea. Come to Chelsea. Still, he probably didn't watch that. I mean, if you watched that game last night, which I doubt he would be, he'd probably think, ooh, do I want any of that stuff? Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen... That's an update for now. News will start moving quickly as we get into the next week. So make sure you keep it locked to Football Therapy. Subscribe. Hit the bell. (laughs) Like the video if you want to show some sweet love and support. Do check out Spitch by clicking the link in the top of the description. Uh, It's good. Right. See you soon. Peace.